Could you walk us through? I, I haven't had time to read all the whole 57 thing, just pages of the thing, just the, the top of it. So could you walk us through the whole process of how this accelerates the pod up to speed and then recaptures that energy at the other end? Sure. So the, 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 it's a linear in, induction I mean, motor, an electric induction motor. Essentially, they're all that version of, of the same kind of uh, um, AC induction motor that is in the Model S. Um, so, so this is this is a pretty long-standing technology. In fact, uh, it was uh, a linear induction motor was basically invented by by Tesla back in the day, um, and uh, it it, uh, it essentially um, uh, creates an electromagnet with the uh, or, or it t t turns this, the air skis into an electromagnet. Um, so they're not naturally magnetic, but um, with an induction motor, you can induce uh, magnetic force, um, and uh, and then it uh, it just sends, essentially sends a pulse down the down, down the motor, um, and that the, the tube ends up essentially chasing the pulse, and, um, and you, you, you gradually accelerate gradually accelerate in, in a very smooth manner to around 800 miles an hour. So it's similar to the maglev idea, except you wouldn't be using the the electric current for the levitation part, you'd have the air, the airflow for that. Right. Yeah. Okay. A a exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then it recaptures all that energy as you decelerate. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's a, a linear induction motor in reverse, becoming a generator on the receiving end. Gotcha. All right. Um, I'll let the next person ask the ask the next question. Thanks a lot. All right. You're welcome. And your next question comes from the line of Justin Pritchard. Uh, two questions. What do you see as the likelihood of this actually being built? And uh, I, you've heard you say that it could never crash. How could that be in, in earthquake country? Oh, um, so, well, I mean, obviously never is a, a rather strong word. I mean, um, it, it's just extremely difficult, I suppose, to crash. And, you know, unlike an airplane, it's not really moving in in three dimensions. It's not like it's going to fall out of the sky, essentially, or nor, nor can it be really derailed as, as a train can. Um, and the, 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 the thought I had was to actually, in the pylons on which the, the, the tube is mounted, to have um, earthquake damp. It's sort of similar to the sort of thing that you have in, in buildings in California. Um, so that they're like basically shock absorbers. Um, and uh, so you have two laterally mounted for XY to take out XY movement, and then one vertically mounted in the post to, to take out vertical movement. Um, now, there's going to be potentially some earthquake that's so gigantic that it, it overcomes the, the dampers, but then, you know, we have that same problem in buildings. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if LA falls down, well, I guess the high blue will too. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's, it should be, in, in relative to, say, uh, a train, um, where, where you can't really, you can't, you can't really do that um, on the, with tracks. Um, it, it should be quite a bit safer. Okay. And what about the prospects of it of it actually being built? So I've been, I've been thinking about that, and uh, I mean, I have to say I'm I'm somewhat tempted to at least make a a demonstration prototype, um, and um, it, but I, but I think you would have to point it for for a little bit of time, so it's not not, not immediate, but. Um, I sort of come around a little bit on, on my thinking here that uh, maybe I could just do the, the beginning bit and just create a subscale version that that's operating and, and then and then hand it over to somebody else. Um, I think some of the more difficult things just, are just, just kind of ironing out the, the details at a subscale level is, is a tricky thing. Um, so uh, I, I think. I think I'll probably end up doing that, um, but it just won't—it just won't be immediate because in, in the short term I'm going to focus on SpaceX and Tesla execution. Sorry, just to clarify that, I think in the past you'd said that it would be open source. So is that—is that still the case, or are you waffling yeah, on still, that? Or? It, no, it's still the case. Actually, it's, this is not from the standpoint of of you know me, me trying to make I mean, uh, uh, you know some some sort of. But I'm not I'm not trying to you know go. Make a ton of money on this, but but I would like to see it come to fruition, and um, 
and, and I think it might help if if I did a demonstration article. Uh, and uh, so I think I think I probably will do that actually. Uh, as a, yeah. So as I've if someone come around and then my thinking on that front. And your next question comes from the line of Damon Levin. Uh, hi, Elon. Um, wanted to uh, just get a little bit of background um, on the technology, kind of how this was fleshed out by you and the SpaceX crew. Um, and I think you said as well that the Tesla had uh, some of the Tesla people had a hand on it. Um, could you kind of yeah. explain how you were using SpaceX and Tesla to kind of collaborate on this design and, and maybe get into some of the technical details? Sure. Um, well, um, so I, 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 as, as I've described in, in the happy paper and said before, I, I was trying to think of you know, what, what, what's the theoretically best way to go from um, San Francisco to LA um, if, you, if you really were trying to make it as, as good as possible. Um, I sort of n narrowed it down to the, rather obviously one must have some kind of tube with a special environment, and then. The question is, what what sort of special environment, what, and what what would actually work, and um, to you know, are, are we violating any laws of physics, or, or doing something that you know it, it fundamentally doesn't close for, from an energy standpoint, or something like that. So, um, so, so I, I I bounce around a bunch of ideas with the SpaceX and and Tesla aerodynamics teams. Um, and uh, and then a few of the the guys in the Tesla sort of um, motor motor group um, and um, at, 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 at first I thought okay well can, can we make something which is like a pneumatic tube work uh, you know where you're essentially like a big version of the the male tube um, and and you know, run the Basic calculations and the energy required to do that it was truly truly enormous <laughs> um, and, and required a, a crazy number of boost pumps so, so then, then then we tried lowering the pressure uh, still required huge energy if you go all the way to a vacuum it, it can work, but then you will have the challenges of maintaining a vacuum um, and um, and then, and then I, I said, well, what if we put the put a, a compressor fan on the front? You know, how much energy would it take to pump the air from front to rear? And um, and then and then can we find a dual use for that that process and you know use air bearings? Um, so I asked the SpaceX and Tesla teams to just you know, tell me if they thought that would that would work and what, what are the um, how much energy would they think that would take, and, and would it actually solve the Cantowitz limit issue? And uh, that, that was kind of the final breakthrough that was needed, and they convinced that it would. And then we then we try to think around for what the right uh, the right pressure level is in the tube, um, and, and I came to the conclusion it's probably somewhere around the uh, you know, uh, one tour level, and um, you know, that's sort of a happy medium that's manageable from a backing standpoint, or, you know, for, from a air pump standpoint, and and still gives you the air to use the air bearings, but doesn't, doesn't give you so much drag that 